For the purposes of this training video, we wanted to show you how to start a session completely from scratch. But for the remainder of this training video, we're going to go ahead and load up and use the included demo session that came on your 3Play. Once you enter the live production environment, you can see the main interface. And the main interface is basically broken down into four sections. The top section is the preview section. And you can see all of your incoming video sources and both of your independent outputs in full frame rate video display. Just below that is the clip list. This shows us all of the marked events and all of the camera angles available for each marked event. Below that is the playlist. This is where you can easily create melts and highlight reels, including audio and transitions. And then down at the bottom, you'll see the dashboard, which gives you extra control and also shows you system status while using the control surface. If you attached the second multi-view monitor, you'll see the multi-view display. And this shows you larger versions of all eight of the incoming camera sources, very large versions of both of the outputs, and the production clocks. Both the main interface and the multi-viewer can be configured. You may not always be using eight cameras for your instant replay, so depending upon how many cameras you're using in your production, you can configure the three-play interface to match your production needs. Along the top, there are tabs in the main interface, allowing you to change out to a four-monitor view, a six-monitor view, an eight-monitor view, or the recorded cameras view. If you're only using a specific number of cameras that you're recording, and it's not four, six, or eight, you can tell the three play, I only want to have displays for the inputs that actually have video signals coming in on it. The three play will actually determine how many cameras you're recording and set up the interface for you appropriately. Once you have your interface set up, you can go ahead and configure the video inputs. Now you can configure each video input right from its input monitor here on the interface. As you mouse over any of these input monitors, you'll see a small gear highlight in the upper right hand corner. Simply click on that gear to launch the configuration panel for that input. Once here, you have the ability to choose the format and resolution of that input, whether it's coming in high definition or standard definition, 720, 1080. There are multiple frame rates, a lot of different variables here for you to choose. And remember, each input can be a different resolution and a different format. You also have some proc amp controls for that input to adjust video levels and some white balance controls as well. Along the bottom, you have the ability to choose what type of audio is coming in, and each input can support up to four channels of audio. You can bring audio in either through microphone or line inputs. You can bring it in digitally through AES, EBU, B, and C connectors, or you can use embedded SDI audio. You do have the ability to adjust the gain and mute the audio on that input as well. In the upper right hand corner of each camera configuration panel, you have the ability to rename that camera. We'll go ahead and call this downfield. And when we close our configuration panel, you'll notice that our input monitor here on the main interface is labeled downfield, as well as the monitor on our multi-view monitor. 3Play 820 features two independent outputs, and each of these can be configured independently. To get to the output configuration panel, click on the small gear right above the upper right hand corner of output B. This will open the output configuration panel, giving you the ability to configure output A and output B by using the tabs at the top of the configuration panel. You can select the output type, but if you're outputting high definition, it's going to be ghosted. When you set up your session in NewTek's 3Play820, you choose your output resolution. If you choose high definition, then both the SDI and component outputs will be active at the same time. Now, if you choose to output standard definition, then you'll be able to choose SDI, component, composite, or YC. And the connection type here would actually not be ghosted. You would be able to make those selections. But because we have high definition, we're always going to be outputting SDI and component. So no selection is possible. Each output has its own independent proc amp controls, allowing you to control video levels and adjust white balance on each output independently. There's also a volume control, allowing you to control the audio that's going out that independent output. 
You have the ability to rename that output right here. And we'll go ahead and say this is replay1. And you can see that it's been renamed on the main interface and it's been renamed on the multi-viewer. The tabs along the top of the output configuration panel allow you to reach output A as well as output B. And there's a tab for the auxiliary multi-view. Now, this allows you to apply heads-up display information to the inputs and the outputs on the multi-viewer. So, turn those off. You see that the heads-up display is gone from our outputs and from the individual input previews. Now, if we turn on our input previews, you'll see we get labels on each of those monitors on the multi-viewer. And if we turn on the output heads-up display, you'll see that we get the control information on both of our outputs. There's also a tab for GenLock, and the system will allow you to use either bi-level or tri-level GenLock, and it is enabled right here. Just like the main interface, the multi-viewer's interface can be modified to match your production needs. Back in the multi-view tab, you have the ability to choose the screen layout for the multi-view monitor, and this can be four monitor view, a six monitor view, an eight monitor view, just the cameras that have been set up to be recorded, or just the two independent outputs with large production clocks. Back in the main interface, the output displays also show heads up display information. This information could be turned on and off by clicking on the small eye in the upper right hand corner of each of those output displays. Nutex 3 Play A20 has internal production clocks that you can use during your live production, and we've seen these displayed in some of our display output setups. Now, you can either use the internal clock inside of the 3 Play itself, or you can sync the 3 Play to external timecode. The clock output, right up here in the upper right hand corner, has a gear right next to it, allowing you to configure your production clocks. Now the production clock can be set up with a production time, start and end, and this will give you the secondary production clock. The secondary production clock before the production will be displayed as a countdown to the start of the production. And then once the production starts, that clock will become a countdown to the end of the production. The second production clock is either going to show time of day or the external time code that's being fed into the system. Here you can select whether you want to use the internal system clock or the external time code. External time code is brought in as an audio input on input 7. As soon as you bring in external time code and set the source to that time code, you'll see that the display changes color. This is showing you visually that you're accepting external time code. This time code, whether you use the internal or external time code, will be stamped down to every video track that's recorded during your session.